Okay, this lesson is called Value, Shape, and Texture. We are going to be looking at texture, but using it um, with value and shape. <laughs> so that's the name, Value, Shape, and Texture. All right, why don't you begin by getting a piece of paper and drawing yourself a value scale. And I'm having it, I'm having you draw two and a half inches long and an inch and a half wide rectangle and then half inch segments and then number them one to five. Please stop the video and go ahead and draw that up. Okay, now that you've done that, grab a pencil and draw three circles faintly and I stack them just for interest. So go ahead and stack those and again, pause the video and just get yourself some sketch circles. All right, let's look at texture. Texture when it's flat, I'm gonna flip this over. Texture when it's flat, um, here's my two circles. I'm gonna show you it with really only one value and then with about four values. So if it's just flat, and I'm gonna scumble here, which just means kind of a scribble, but it's in all different directions. It's not, it's not like this where you would just circle, 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 circle. Okay, I guess some people might call that scumbling, but I don't know, I was always taught that scumbling was kind of more of a all over the place, back and forth. Scribbling, really. Just a fancy way of saying to scribble. It winds up looking like a pile of wire. Okay, so here is one value, and this can actually look flat. It doesn't have any dimension to it. Um, let's say that there's a light source coming in on this. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to scumble in about four different values. So I've got a lot of scumbling. I'm going to kind of lift my pen a little bit. You can do this with a ballpoint pen if you do not have a precise. I, I handed everybody a precise, a pilot precise in class. If you were absent, just ask for it. I'll get you your, your pen. Okay, I'm going to add more scumbling down below, make it darker. And remember, pen and ink is tricky because the more lines you add, the more it's going to just turn the lights off. It gets darker and darker the more ink you add, which makes sense. But when you're trying to move, uh, a change a subject, it's hard to talk and draw at the same time. When you're trying to change a subject, you want to add more to it and fix it. And the problem with pen and ink is when you go to do that, you're just making it darker and darker and darker because you've added more ink. So it's hard to just walk away. And I'm just not going to add in much at the top. So can you see how this one looks a lot more like it's round and spherical? This one looks just flat. Okay, so when you have just one value, it can actually wind up turning into pattern versus texture. Okay, you could do this even with daisies or an actual pattern like little hearts or something. If you added in just flat hearts all even and they didn't have light to dark, it would wind up looking um, like pattern and not texture. So it's very important that you see the difference between these two. Okay, let's begin. Um, we're going to go to our value scale and what I'd like you to do is hatch values. Well, let's start with really dark because again the darker is easier to do because all you have to do is add more. It's almost harder to do it lighter because we just love to overwork things the way we are. I'm going to go directionally. I'm asking you to go directionally. I don't I want you to get used to doing that. You are hatching. You're not scumbling. You're hatching. So we're going to go in a direction. And again, feel free. It's okay if it falls outside the lines a little bit because you're hatching. It's really hard to stay in the lines. I'd rather you go over than under. So five values. We're going to go as dark as we can. And of course, it could wind up just absolutely going completely pitch black. Okay, number four. We're going to go and do this, but we are not going to add as much. We want this to be decidedly lighter. Not super light, but lighter. So hatch that. And if you need to pause the video, you're always welcome to. Please do that. I don't want you to feel like you're getting caught behind. Let's keep it in the same direction, if you don't mind. 
and number three, lighter. I'm spreading them out. Okay. Does that look? Yeah, like three different. If I think that these two, which I actually do, I think my four and my five are rather similar, I'm just going to add more because I want my five to de decidedly look different and be blacker. Okay, so now I have really good black, a medium. It's getting lighter and lighter. Number two will be the last one we touch, and this one's easy because you just don't do as much. You just spread it out. And then I have white. I'm done. So you have a value scale of one to five. Okay. I think doing value scales when you do them with just pencil and they're all smooth, that's easier to do. When you go to do value and texture, I tried a value texture scale just one to ten. And I found that it was just, it got a little tricky in here to make these look decidedly different. And I'm not sure I even succeeded. It still wound up coming out looking kind of like five values, except that the third value just got elongated. So... I decided let's just make it easy on ourselves. I think you get the idea. You definitely need to have each value look a little bit darker, 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 darker. They should look distinctly different from one another. Okay, let's go to our, um, our circles. And we're going to make these look like little spheres sitting on one on top of the other. And what I'd like to do is look at three different textures. We're going to look at this one, which is called scumbling. This one, which is called stippling and hatching again. And what I'd like us to do is just get used to the pen. We did it over here in a very formal way, but let's look at it informally. And so we're going to try to just practice it um, from five to two in one swath. And I, you know, obviously number one is out here somewhere, but I'm not going to, I mean, I guess I can indicate it with a couple dots, but so now we're just going to do a small little scale without the formal lines. Okay. So anywhere on your paper you want to, and feel free always to turn your paper. So I'm just going to practice scumbling, and you can actually scumble rather loosely. Just make your two, and then find your three. There's my two, there's my three. I can go to my four. Two, three, and you can kind of Fade them in one to the other a little bit, and then my five. I'm going to try to do this a little faster, but there you go. So five, four, three, two, one, kind of out here, okay? And that's going to get curved over one of our spheres. So let's start with the scumbling. Let's start with the top one. So we're just going to go ahead and we're going to figure out where our light source is. Let's decide on it being, let's say, over here. Uh, we talked about light source. We've, you've seen it in other videos, but just so you can see, there's a thing called cast shadow. And depending on where the cast shadow is, it shows how high up the subject is away from the surface. If I bring it down, they're going to touch, they're going to meet. But if, they're, if it's floating, it's going to have a cast shadow that is unique and separated from its from the, the subject. So how you place your cast shadow is very important. It gives you very good visual cues as to what's happening with the subject. You can see how these are floating. My hands are floating off of the paper because they're not touching and then when my fingers touch. So now you know, if I were to draw the cast shadow like this with that window, you'd know that my finger is definitely curved. Even though you, you, know, you see it curved, the shadow really helps you to know that. Also, remember, there's different light sources. How many light sources? I have a very distinct light source next to me, but well, you can see my pen here. Do you see that there are two light sources interacting with my pen? There's one from the kitchen and one from my, my light source right above, so I do have two cast shadows. There's technically four light sources in this room at the moment, but two are very strong, so that's why you're really only seeing the two. But anyway... Choose where you want your light source. We are going to choose just one light source. Let's go over here, and I'm just going to indicate it for you by drawing a little dot with an arrow. Okay? And that way it will remind me as I go on to do the other two. And I'm going to take my pen and make just kind of a dotted line for myself where the highlight will be. 
where the light source is closest it's going to be lightest so if you look at my neck well obviously you're white knuckling it but if I were to have hold on let me see here oh this might be good I've got a candle so you can see let me tilt it get a good oh there we go there's a highlight see that little line there there's a highlight right there whatever is closest to the light source is going to have this highlighted area you can yeah, there you go you can see this highlighted area it's closest to the light source and then it gets dark as it goes down we want the same for our spheres so I'm drawing my little highlight I can do that on each one and I'd like to do just these dots to make sure I keep those spaces free of what I'm doing because you can kind of forget <laughs> okay so I'm going to take what I did over here and transfer port it onto the sphere. So I'm going to scumble pretty loosely. Remember I can always add, it's pretty hard to take away. I'm just going to incorporate the dots real light. Yeah, I'm already trying to overwork it, aren't I? And scumble all the way around. Again, it's a fancy term for scribble, but it's fun. It's going to wind up looking like a little ball of wire. Okay, filling in the whole area lightly, loosely. Now I'm going to go in and work on that shading. So I want it really dark under here because it's not close to the light source. So scumbling around, let it go around the edges so it's kind of fun and wiry. Darker, darker, darker. I, like, I want to get that five, that value five in there. And then come up with it, adding a little more and Okay, now in here I'm just going to be kind of delicate and I'm going to kind of make up, I'm going to imply that there's the wire back here. It's just, I'm going to leave it bald. That's okay. And again, try to get it pretty dark. Okay, so there is my scumbled um, sphere. And if I want to, I can go ahead and, and erase that pencil line to make sure it's gone if it's bothering me. I do have to warn you, this ink sometimes is still wet. So when you go to, yeah, I did it. Um, you go to a race, it will, it will smear. Ever I ever do a pen and ink drawing that I really want to keep in frame, I wait a full 24 hours to make sure that ink is totally, totally dry. So it will smear because it is still wet. Okay, so this one, let's label it so we don't forget this is, this is called scumbling. Okay, so let's go over here and let's do hatching. Let's label it hatching. And again, you want to be directional. Now, this one's going to look like a furry ball. What we want to make sure is that the fur goes in a certain direction. So it winds up kind of looking like that. So it's not a complete mess. It actually, by the way we flail the fur out, it's going to help and help us, I guess my ball is going to have that highlight there, so I'll turn it. But it's going to wind up, because they're directional, it's going to make this look like a sphere. If I were to do it straight diagonal, it would actually flatten it. So you want to make sure that it looks like it's getting stretched around that ball. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to work kind of my hatches coming out from the sphere and around. And I'm going to go ahead and hatch, hatch, hatch in layers. Now I want to kind of spread it out. Again, I can always add it in. It's hard to take it out. I'm going to kind of imply up here that there's something going on. Even though you can see the dots, if you were observing this, I don't, I mean, if you looked at it, I don't think you'd even really notice if you, if you weren't looking for it. Okay, I'm going to add a little bit more because I want it to get darker as it goes down. And now I'm going to work on that black, that five. Sorry, I got the camera bobbing around. Directional lines are very important information. 
if you start now he's supposedly sitting on behind I mean this is probably sitting on top so it might actually be pretty dark in here because he's kind of hanging out on top so I'll go ahead and do that but leaving kind of the back to show okay and again I'd let it dry but then you can go in and erase those pencil lines and you have yourself a furry hatched ball. The next one we want to do is called stippling. And stippling is a lot of dots. So you just go through. Um, very easy to stipple kind of around the top. So again, you might want to just fill it in kind of all over and try not to bang it. Being next to someone who's stippling can be really annoying. So try not to irritate if you're at the table with someone. But you can do it quietly. It is possible. Sorry, I keep banging this thing with my hand. And again, where you add more dots, it gets darker. I'm going to turn my paper over. I don't know why it's bothering me. Please always feel free to turn your paper any way you want as long as it works with your hand and you're not going to get you know completely off as you're drawing. This is not an essay. You do not have to keep it always upright. In drawing you can turn your paper any way you want because it's a drawing. Okay, stippling clearly takes more time. <laughs> but stippling has a texture that's very, very smooth. It has a nice appearance. If you're doing glass or ice or snow, especially snow, oh my goodness, sand. Oh, stubble of a beard. And you can kind of just start thinking through what would have this texture. Lots of things have this texture. And it's a it's a really it's a standard go-to. When you think texture drawing, stippling is right in there. One way people will kind of cheat with stippling, I'll do this over here, because it does take a lot of time because you're making these little little dots. These go so much faster, especially scumbling, oh my goodness. But you can do what's called um, directional shading. We're not going to do it for this one, but um, it's like a gradient. Sometimes what people will do, especially if it's on a flat surface, let's say we were doing the side of a car and you needed a really glossy surface, you can do this little trick where you, um, it's again better on square things. But if you were stippling, you've got your stipple, you can actually um, put very even lines over the stippling and it can still make it look smooth like that. So it's sometimes a, a bit of a cheat people will do with stippling. They'll, they'll couple the two and they'll do these very even lines. Again, it's super great on something that's um, more square. And they'll just do these really straight lines, very even, and then they'll stipple their way through it. And they, they do work nicely together, but for this, sorry, I'm going to make you go for it. Okay, so I don't want to bore you to tears, but you get the idea. More dots, it gets darker. Less dots, it gets lighter. And you can even leave it bald in the middle or just put three dots and you're done. So that was the lesson we did in class. And if you have not completed this, use this as your step-by-step. -step. Okay.